Hi everyone and welcome to the Stoichiometry of Chalk lab. For this lab you're going to need this baggie from your kit as well as your digital scale and several of your beakers and your large 100 mil graduated cylinder. Um, and I think that's, that's the gist of it. Okay, so for this lab, what you are going to be doing, sort of multi-part, you're going to be practicing making solutions. So the first part, uh, first thing you need to do before you can even do the lab is figure out um, and do calculations to figure out how much of these different salts you're going to be using to make uh, solutions of certain concentrations. So um, the two solutions that you are making are calcium chloride and sodium carbonate. Sodium Yes, sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate, sodium carbonate, I wrote this wrong, NH2CO3, okay, sodium carbonate. So the uh, calcium chloride we're going to do in the large 500 mil beaker, and the sodium carbonate we're going to do in the 250 mil beaker. We're making 75 milliliters of solution of each, so you'll do your calculations and figure out what mass of each of those salts you need to put in there. We're going to turn on our digital scale, we're going to use the weigh pan to weigh out these masses. So let's see, you've done the calculations, you've figured it out. We're going to tear the scale with our weigh pan on there. Um, and let's say I'm going to do the, I think the protocol has you the calcium chloride first. This is labeled. It's the ones that look like little tiny snowballs. All right, you can measure it out simply by pouring. Oops, before I start, I almost forgot. We are working with chemicals, and I should be careful not to get these on my hands because they can be skin irritants, but I definitely don't want to get them in my eyes, so I'm going to put on my safety goggles. All right, and I don't want these solutions in my eyes as well. So I am wearing my safety goggles. If you do get these on your hands, just wash them off with water. They can be irritating. So, and don't eat them. Um, so you can mass it out like this simply by tapping. Um, you can also use your spatula that came with the kit in the sort of miscellaneous bag. There's another way you can do it. So try to get it as close as you can to your exact calculation. And um, I'm not going to tell you what that is. So this is our calcium chloride, so I'm going to pour that in here. All right, and then I will wipe this out. It is a dry material, so there shouldn't be any residual in there, but I just want to make sure that there's no residual. So I wipe that off with like a damp towel. And now I'm going to measure out my sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate in the same way. I'm going to tear my scale. It's teared. And I'm going to measure out a certain mass of that. Again, not giving away what that is. I didn't even look. I'm just doing random amounts here for you in this demo. All right, so some of it's sticking actually to the whey pan. So I might actually take some water and put that in here and dump it because I want all of that powder going into my solution. All right, I don't want to lose any. That would be a room, some room for error there. So um, I'm going to rinse this with water. I'm just going to, I have a cup of water that I've pre-filled here to make it easier for me to fill my beaker. So I need 75 milliliters, so I'm filling it to the 75 milliliter mark. That would be halfway between 70 and 80. And I'm going to use my eyeballs level to um, make sure that I'm at exactly 75 milliliters. I don't know if you can see that, really. And then I'm going to just pour like a drop or two in here. And I might need to use my spatula to really get it dissolved. I just want to make sure all of that is going into my beaker. You know what? I'll just hold it like this and pour. That's what I'll do. Might not have been a bad idea to do that with the calcium chloride, too. The calcium chloride is just more, not as fine, I guess. Doesn't stick as much. So then you might want to use a stir rod which I actually enclosed in a different lab, but you could use a spoon or you could use your pipette as a stir rod. 
and make sure that it's completely dissolved. Stir it until it's completely dissolved. And this might take a few minutes, but be diligent. All right, I am not because I want to keep this video short, but you want to make sure it, you stir it until it is all completely dissolved. All right, then you would wash this out with water, put it in the sink, rinse it with water. And we're going to do the same thing to our calcium chloride. I guess I'll keep using the screen here. So I've got my graduated cylinder, putting in 75 milliliters of water, getting it exactly at 75, and adding this to my solute. And again, I'm going to stir it. Stir it until it is all completely dissolved. So what we have here is two soluble salts. Two different soluble salts are dissolved in two different solutions. And what happens when we mix them together is we end up forming an insoluble salt, and that is a precipitation reaction. And we are going to, so we're performing a precipitation reaction, and we're going to calculate, stoich, do some stoichiometry calculations. We're going to figure out how much of that precipitate we expect to get, and we're going to actually weigh um, and measure that precipitate to see how much we actually got. So we'll get an actual yield and we'll calculate a theoretical yield. So I have my two solutions completely dissolved now. Now what I want to do, I'm not going to use all 75 milliliters. I'm going to put these over here. Um, I'm going to take the small 100 mil beaker here and at, this is where I'm going to do the precipitation reaction. So what I'm going to do is actually mix um, let me just double check the procedure. I'm going to mix 30 milliliters of each. So I'm going to measure out, again, I'll just use that 100 mil graduated cylinder. I'm going to start with the sodium carbonate and I'm going to pour 30 milliliters into this graduated cylinder. I'm going to get exactly 30 milliliters. I'm going to stick this stock solution aside and I'm going to pour 30 milliliters of that in here. Then it's important to rinse out the graduated cylinder with water. So I'm going to take it to the sink, I pour water in it, and I kind of give it a swish. And you might want to do that a couple of times. All right, so it's been cleaned out. Now we're going to measure out 30 milliliters of our calcium chloride. So when we're doing our stoichiometry calculations, it's important that we are doing it with the amount uh, amounts of material that we actually used. We actually used, 30, we, although we prepared 75 milliliters of solution, we're using 30 milliliters of solution. So when I add this, you're going to see this precipitation reaction happen right away. You're going to see white precipitate form. Do -do -do. So it's a very fine precipitate, so it looks very milky now. Um, it looks kind of like milk. But if you look real close, you can see there are like little dots of solid. And we're going to purify this solid. And the way we're going to do that is through filtration. And so the filter technique we're going to use, I sent you two pieces of filter paper. You should only need one, but I sent you two just in case. So you're going to take that piece of filter paper, and you're going to fold it in half, and then in half again into quarters. And then you're going to open up just one of the flaps. So what you have is a funnel. Oops, I'm just going to straighten it. So you have a cone shape. All right, and this is the filter that we're going to use to filter this uh, material. So I said in the procedure to just use the 100 milliliter graduate cylinder. So you're going to rest this here. Now it's not going to stay. If you let go, it's going to fall out because it's too light and not fold it well enough, but once we start pouring in it, once it gets wet, it will stay on its own. So initially, we're gonna hold it there. We're gonna pour just a little bit of this solution in. Um, we, it's not gonna flow through very quickly, it's gonna drip through. So this part is a little bit time consuming. Now you can see that it's wet, it's heavy enough to stay on its own there, and it's dripping. So this filtrate is clean 
water. That's the water, actually it's water with the soluble ions dissolved in it. And what's going to get trapped in the filter is our precipitate. So I'm just going to, you know, every few minutes add a little bit more. I maybe want the filter to get half full, not even. You don't want it to spill out. Um, so as the filtrate moves through, you'll keep pouring it until you've poured all of it through. And you're going to let it drip dry, essentially. And it's going to take a while to dry. Um, in a lab setting, we might dry it over like a hot plate so that we can do it in a matter of minutes. Um, but we're going to do it in a low-tech, safe way at home, which is air dry it. And this can take a couple of days. Filter paper is very absorbent, so it's very wet. As you can see, it's full of water. We need it to dry out because we're ultimately going to um, need to weigh the product. Oh, and I skipped an important step. So before we put the filter paper in here, we should have weighed the empty filter paper. So um, I suppose if you forgot, like me, in a pinch, this is poor technique, you could just weigh a different piece of filter paper and call that the weight of the empty filter paper. All filter papers are not created exactly equal, so they all have slightly different masses, so it's important to really get the mass of the one you actually used. But in this case, I could use my second filter paper in a pinch to take a mass of the empty filter paper. Because our precipitate is going to stick to the filter paper, we don't want to try to scrape it off. We would, we would lose um, a significant amount if we did it that way. So we are going to weigh it on the filter paper at the end. So this is going to take a while. Um, you might be sitting here for about, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes just getting the filtrate through. And then you're just going to want to set that filter paper so you can set aside like this in the lab. I suggested that you use one of your beakers and you shove like a paper towel in it and make like a little pillow for it to sit on. You want to just make sure you put it somewhere that's out of the way so that no one in your house accidentally like knocks it over or throws it away. So just put it somewhere where it's not going to get ruined. Um, I think sometimes inside a cabinet in, in a house, my house, we have people, we have kids, we have animals. So the safest place to put it would be in a cabinet that closes that the animals cannot open and that the kids will not want to open. Um, warmer places will make it dry faster than colder places. And hopefully in the summer, this is a, that will be an easy place to find. In the winter, I would put it uh, near maybe a radiator if you could. And um, so once it is completely dry, in you know 24 to 48 hours you'll take the mass in fact you'll mass it several times to make sure that you get it when it's completely dry so when the mass is no longer changing you know it is completely dry and um, and that is your actual yield and you'll compare that in your calculations to your theoretical yield and this precipitate by the way that you're creating is chalk when you write with chalk on a chalkboard, that is made out of this material. I guess I say it in the lab so I can say it um, out loud. It's calcium carbonate. And um, so it is kind of an everyday material that you're making, this calcium carbonate. All it is is chalk. So it has the same safety features as chalk, and it would be irritating if you breathed it in, so don't breathe it in. Um, I don't know if you could actually write with it on something black, uh, but you can just, it's safe to discard in the trash when you're done. And all of these solutions are safe to discard down the sink. Um, and you can either send back your extras of these chemicals or you can discard of them in the trash. Um, again, never consume chemicals that come with your chemistry lab kit, even if they are consumables. And that is all I have to say about that, I think, before I turn it off. I'm just going to double check. Do, do, do. Yep. Okay. I lied. This is not the lab where you're going to measure it at different time points. You're just going to wait 48 hours. It'll be good and dry by 48 hours. If you don't have 48 hours, 
or if you ch check it at 24 hours and then at 36 hours and it's the same weight, it's probably dry enough. 48 hours is a good safe time though. So the longest part of this procedure is definitely doing this filtration. All right, now I'm done for real.